come back together. The, the issue here, though, is not to finish the conversation. The issue is to start everybody thinking and to get those ideas up so we have a collaborative, uh, a collaborative set of work that we can take forward, both on projects and indeed on some of the policy questions. So there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of overlap in concept, if not ideas. The, uh, the, the person on the panel who said the price of waste is too cheap, who said that? Was it Franz? I'm not sure. But nevertheless, I heard people talking about, well, how do you crowdsource good ideas? Um, that overlapped with Bill's challenge about if they're good ideas, they've also got to be, be uh, a common good. So you're not going to recycle poisons, for example. And so you are going to recycle water and the things that are good for society and make profitable uh, a base out of that. There was also the question, if it's too cheap, then, uh, then and you're actually taxing recycling products. So a business who recycles their own products is basically doing double taxation. That's ridiculous. So how do you price with tax incentives waste that is simply uh, discarded and indeed provide incentives for waste that is recycled? And then there were a really good set of ideas about flow of materials and waste to production and not just... Uh, the policy ideas around regulatory incentive, but indeed better data management to link the capacity for the, the circular economy. So there's a lot of deep thinking going on here. I was just going to call on one or two peoples. Uh, Stuart uh, Pan from HP, can you tell us what you thought was the really big idea in your group? We were talking about the role of sovereign wealth funds uh, in circular economies and the question, how do you have a capital model for sustainability? How do you measure a circular economy? What's the new sets of benefits? And you know, when we look at it, we think about doing good things, but I don't think we've really captured the whole new economic model involved in using stuff over and over again. I was thinking, how do we, when we go to our investors, you know, they, they like hearing the story, but they also like seeing the hard cost benefits. And we, haven't quite figured out how to do that in an easily explainable way. So that's the one I'm... I'm okay, so back. the economic model that shows that it's not just doing good, it's profitable as well. I think that's a huge challenge. Let me just go over here and pick someone at random. What, was you, what struck you as the really significant idea you want to keep thinking about? Um, for me, I think... Um, uh, <laughs> Information, for me, information on cost of waste, how do we uh, visualize that and how do we um, direct that towards the, the consumer? Um, ideas for that and also, um, uh, so, so, nah. crowdsourcing for ideas. Okay, so there's two big ones. How do you actually make the price of waste public and crowdsource ideas for Solutions, And I think we've got time for one more, so I'm going to pick this person here and say, what are you thinking about right now? What really struck you? Well, I be think, interesting. Um, I think two things. I think one was, um, one thing that we talked about was um, the need to think just more about collaborative design. So how do you actually influence the upfront product design to use fewer components, fewer resources, um, better modularity, so you can replace certain parts and keep the overall structures. And so we had some folks who were um, involved in medical technologies and others where there's a high kind of value for refurbished product. Uh, so that was one. Uh, the other actually was, um, for me personally, I was really compelled by uh, the comment that Franz made about um, shifting the, the thinking from initial pricing to total cost of ownership. Um, and how do you actually change consumer behavior and understanding so it's not just the product developers and, and suppliers who are thinking about this, but you shift consumer demand to value company or products that have resale value and have higher quality and last longer. There you go. There's a wise uh, link in to somebody who you probably, most of you know. Where is uh, Matthew Stanislaus? I can't see him. Over here. Come on over here. Matthew's going to actually uh, talk to you about what um, 
the platform in 2018 will do in terms of focusing particularly on uh, two priority but cost cutting policy challenge. And then I'm going to uh, help him draw out of, of uh, a few people one big idea for policy. So let's uh, hand it to Matthew. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So really is try to get your guidance. Um, so in uh, the consultations that the team has had uh, over this period of time, policy has been identified as one of the top levers to really accelerate a circular economy. And I'll give you uh, some of the ideas that have come up. Um, the whole border issue, the transport of uh, goods for remanufacturing across both national and subnational border has been an issue that's been raised consistently. Uh, the definition of waste being so broad that it inhibits uh, refurbishment, inhibits uh, business to business transactions has been identified. Public procurement policies and the, the look at public procurement with globally is about 20% of GDP and how can public procurement really achieve its promise in a way that's not done to date. Uh, looking at uh, design and incentives and I think there is a, possibly a debate that played out in our, our group whether it's a echo-based mandatory design aspect or an incentive-based design uh, role. You know, some believe that it should be an incentive base to allow the market to kind of drive it, and some believe it should be kind of some specific echo design uh, parameters. So what, what I'd like to throw out to you is what uh, the platform wants to do, beginning with this conversation, is what do you think should be the top one, two, or maybe three policies? both from, a, from an impact perspective, but also from a doability perspective. Doability from the perspective of, is there alignment among a broad a set of stakeholders? Um, is it doable in the, in the short term? So I'll give you some extreme examples. So renegotiation of trade agreements has been flagged, or trade agreements has been flagged as it inhibits uh, circularity. Maybe but, world peace would be yeah, easier, yeah, exactly. Matthew. But, but we're not going to be able to renegotiate trade agreements, at least in the, but there are ways within trade agreements to enable the transport of materials. So UK is working with Netherlands without disrupting the existing uh, definitions, but enabling uh, through tra tra transparency mechanisms the flow of goods for remanufacturing. So what are those viable short-term solutions that we can hit the ground, show success, and then scale up from there? So that's your charge. Okay, this is your challenge. I'm going to, going to ask one person from each group, not, a, not more than a sentence. If you're going to try and convince the platform that a key policy, you've been dealing with collaborative projects, what's the policy piece you want them to focus on? And this is a bit like a Dutch auction. So, you know, you get your one sentence. Who wants to go here? Oh, you're thinking about it? Come on, faster than that. Who's going to jump in over here? Oh, okay. Yeah, go for it. No, Kevin's thinking about it, yeah? Who's over here? No, come on, there's one poly... Yes. Well, I liked very much... Don't see systems only as the holy grail. Okay. That was the only one sentence, but the added side sentence would be also think of the t different uh, bottom-up approaches. Okay, don't see systems as the only approach. Look at bottom-up approaches. You're going to have to figure out what the policy piece is there, Matthew. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, I've got a hand over here. I think if it's about public policy, it's time to modernise waste laws because they're designed to stop fly tipping. Um, so if we've got a waste product, we have to license it to move it on the road, but it's actually it's a perfectly good material other people can use. It's completely screwing over a lot of our ideas. Mm. I'd buy that one. Modernise waste laws. That's doable, it's something we can advocate, and it makes sense. Circular economy is tremendous business opportunity so what's and economic growth. But what's the policy piece in that? What do you want a government or a regulatory body to do? I want them to incentivise businesses to go green. Incentivise business go bean. That's kind of like world peace, but let's see. <laughs> okay, over here, who's got an idea in this group? Yes, I can see a, a hand. I think the one thing could be uh, avoid landfill completely. Avoid landfill. Yeah. yeah, let's eliminate landfill. 
I think we're in on that one. That's going to be a bit of a challenge, Matthew, but see if you can do it by January, Davos, January, okay? <laughs> who's, got a, who's got a challenge over here? Just as 100 resilient c cities placed 100 chief resilient officers in cities around the world, uh, there was an idea to create a similar program focused on chief circular officers uh, and try to create a knowledge sharing network of people that are placed within government at a local level to think about how circularity can be impactful uh, and then try to advance that mainstream. Okay, chief circular officers, think about that. Okay. And there was one group over here, I'm not letting you off the hook. Yes, Kevin's back, okay. So, so I, I was the proponent for, for incentive market-based solutions. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I'd go with mandating the specific solution in all these situations. I think if we can put the right market-based solutions in, then that's really take the equivalent of the idea of carbon pricing and price these resources that we want to be controlled. Companies will then know how to innovate. They will come up with the most efficient solutions. So I'm, I'm a big proponent for those market-based solutions through implemented through policy. Okay, so carbon pricing tick, but what is the pricing on other, uh, on other products that will incentivize people, yes. And the last uh, is to... Well, you were a little bit crit critical in our group because we didn't have a policy recommendation. So we, you still get it. So uh, there was energy here in the group around best practice sharing, both for companies, but also for governments. Because we don't, so we want to encourage governments to write policy, but it should be the right policy. Right? So if we uh, collect best practices from government policy around the world and start educating policymakers, you know, this works, here's a best practice, here's how it's been done, and then they can copy paste it. I thought that was a very good recommendation from my neighbor here. Okay. Share governments to share best policies and uh, some open transparency so can people talk about it. I'll squeeze in one more minute, but that's it. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm lacking one perspective here. What about the consumers who are supposed to buy the circular goods? So can policy be in such a way done that, that it's attractive for people to buy goods which are circular? So uh, reduce VAT on circular production? I don't know, but yeah, it's a good challenge. Uh, oh, you're pushing it? Oh, he's a big guy. I might be scared to say no. It's a build on what you just said. Um, a very simple one would be, for instance, to eliminate VAT on products that are not being sold but um, used as a service and then return to the manufacturer. There you go. There's a challenge. Now, I do understand, Maddie, that Astrid Shoemaker from the European Commission's in the room. Is that right? Yeah, okay, Astrid. So we shouldn't lose your voice. This is the challenge, the big policy questions. What are you thinking about, you know, from the Commission perspective? I didn't really want to be put on the spot quite like that, but uh, <laughs> having listened to all of that, I think two things I would still add. One is uh, the holistic perspective, so that is not just have a policy model that either looks at waste or just looks at the consumer, but that tries to bring in everybody and looks at the whole supply chain and starts in particular with design and mandates eco-design for repairability, reusability, recyclability, etc. So brings about products that are circular and that can be done through legislation or incentivizing or whatever way. And I think the second part that was missing from the discussion here is really the financial aspect. The new business models will need a better understanding of our financial system, how to finance them. And I think of like an SME with a great idea coming to the local bank and says, you know, I no longer want to sell a cleaning product. I want to sell clean rooms. And by the way, that means selling less of my product. I just sell the service. And the local bank will just stare at the guy and say, have you gone nuts? And this kind of discussion we need to have, how can we bring about an understanding of these new business models and what has to follow. Well, I think you're a perfect partner for the platform, don't you, Fran? So thank you, and no, I'm cutting this off and running back to Matthew, who's going to wrap up, but don't lose any of those ideas because Antonio and Matthew and the team are around and they can follow up with you. Well, thank you for your contribution, and um, your reward for your contribution is that I may actually call you immediately after this. <laughs> so I, I think the goal is to lead up, in the lead up to Davos is to actually identify that one, two, or three issues 
that the PACE team should actually develop and design solutions and to have that implemented. So the, the plan of the PACE team is actually pull together a policy priority paper. You know, so what I hope to do, hopefully you will take my phone calls, <laughs> is for those ideas that have been put on the table, I'd like to flesh them out and really get some sense of prioritization over the next few weeks. And that will then lead to a policy paper which will attempt to summarize the priorities and maybe get a second wave of input that will then inform the selection of the top policies at Davos. So my ask is uh, take my call, okay? <laughs> but, think, but think further about, uh, again, uh, the policies that could scale up, that are workable, uh, that could be adopted in the near future. And the other thing that, that I know, I know Antonia mentioned earlier, but where the acceleration is happening in terms of material intensity is in the developing world, right? So the material intensity in Asia Pacific, for example, went from Asia Pacific was about 20% in 1970 to about 50% today. Now clearly, substantial amount of that is to provide goods for us in the West, you know, but there is this whole, well, should the policy focus from a regional perspective, be the place of material intensity, or should it be both in terms of the consumer side, as someone mentioned? So something for you all to kind of cogitate on, uh, and hopefully when you take my call, you have an answer to that. But thank you. <laughs> and don't wait for his call. If you've actually got a great idea for a policy incentive that you think is already kind of gaining momentum that's doable, call Matty, or indeed and email him at least, and he'll call yes. you back. Because seriously, this is, I think, Antonio, you'd want me to say this is a network of equals and creative ideas are the, the wealth of the platform that um, the WIF is building. So call, email, harass Maddie because that's the way we're going to get the ideas on the table. Now, don't forget, if you haven't got your post-it notes up with your name, organisation and contact details, then he won't be able to call you. So make sure they're on the board. It's looking better, but I think there's probably a few ideas still floating around. I wanted to actually throw now to Franz to tell us how we're going to take these things forward. What are the next steps and what do you want to see build to Davos? Because that is the challenge. Well, let's say my role in, the, in this platform is to help convene and to help uh, get us together. That there be no misconception that the work needs to be done by all of us, right? So it's a relatively new platform. We focused very much on plastics before, and now we want to bring it to uh, a, a, the wider concept of the circular economy. The fact that you're all here means that there is a lot of energy for the topic. There are more stickies on the, on the boards than we probably can handle, um, and we have to make choices. But the most valuable outcome of this afternoon is the mobilization of more people towards this cause of promoting a circular economy. Right? And so I can only repeat what, what Matthew from the World Economic Forum has just said. Um, make sure that you get your name on the list if you want to contribute. Uh, make sure that you identify how you can help. Uh, we will try to get to a concise priority uh, list for the near term. And then I hope that we can see each other in Davos uh, to take this a whole lot further. Right? And then the experience from these platforms is you need to iterate it a few times. Right? This is, after all, uh, a voluntary group of people that try to get together and make an impact. It can be done. It has been done before. Uh, and let's now do it for the circular economy. It will be one contribution towards a better world. And that is what I think we are all motivated by. So thank you for being here. Uh, it was a creative session full of energy. It may feel a little bit inconclusive because we haven't drawn that single conclusion about what we are going to do. But, you know, be realistic. That will now be worked on with this input. And uh, make sure that your names are on here, then you can be part of it. Thank you. OK, so give him a big hand. And thanks for the leadership. There was one idea in the room that I thought absolutely took it for me, and it was buy one phone, if I can characterise it as that. Why wouldn't we challenge Apple?
to build in obsolescence. They're doing it anyway, but build it in, or Samsung or any other brand, and put a, put a time frame on it, but then hand your phone back to the company. So they actually are responsible for recycling it before you get your next one, whether it's a year or two years or whatever you want to do. But buy one phone, I thought, was a great idea. And frankly, we have to get to the point of corporate responsibility and indeed the consumer incentive to do the right thing. So one takeaway for me, I think that's uh, just one area of the work. As Fran says, there's a lot of production out there, there's a lot of ideas, a lot of materials that are being reused or recycled and we've got to get to the dream of that young entrepreneur that says, frankly, if you can't reuse it or recycle it, don't deploy it in the first place. Thank you all for being here. I think we're about three minutes ahead of time, Antonio. So you've got time to add to the uh, board. Antonio will be here, Matthew will be here. Don't feel that you have, you have to go away without making sure that the, the WEF staff understand if you want something on the agenda. And uh, again, can I say to the leadership of Philips, to Naoki and the GEF and others, great platform. It really can change the world. So thank you very much.